Hi, y'all. Good to be here with you today. Man, when Jim called me on Wednesday afternoon, a lot of things went through my mind. Like, first was, really? Oh, by, uh, for guests and new members since June, I'm the used to be. <laughs> oh, he used to be our preacher. In fact, I don't know how they were able to sing like they sung without me helping them down here with all my heart and life and body. But, whew, that was good. That was good. You know, I, I, people ask me a lot, y'all ask me a lot, how's it going? What's well, a new different for us? It's been a really different since June. I think I've preached, I think, five times. So I don't know, Mike Liner, how long this one's going to go today. I can just tell you. <laughs> Cowboys don't start till 12. We're good in this service. We're good. We're good. But it has been a new different. But it's given me some opportunities that are unique. Two weeks ago, I preached in Brownfield. First Baptist Church hadn't preached there in I, I preached one time on an evening service because they didn't trust me. They put me in the evening service. And that was 23, four years ago. They couldn't believe who I was standing up there preaching. They, were, they had their mouth open. The whole, oh, they were sleeping. I thought it, they were just odd. Oh, that's what that was. So that's, that's been extremely unique for us. But, you know, I want to be honest. Not, I'm not blowing smoke. You know what we miss most? is y'all. I mean that with all my heart and with tenderness too. We, we clearly, we go to church to church to church. Uh, since June, we've, I, don't, I haven't added it up. We've probably been in 25, 30 more churches in, in the area. Uh, experiencing a life of church life all over the place. But what we miss most every Sunday morning is y'all. So just know that. Thank you for your prayers and your love for us. Now I did tell Melvin, I told Melvin, I said, Melvin, don't you forget this today. I'm your guest speaker. Be nice to me. So be nice to me. And I've told others that as well. Well, I have something to show you up on the board. Ooh, this is going to gross you out a little bit because I want to ask you, do you know what that little critter is? Woo! Hopefully you don't know personally. Show us the next one there. Yep, yeah, there's a good picture. Let me tell you about this little insect, six-legged insect it is. Wingless parasite. Wingless parasite that feeds off humans and animals' blood. Ooh, a little gross. Incredible how this little creature can jump. It has no wings, can't fly. It jumps. The jumping power that gives them the ability to reach their host, it's called. The body, their body shape, their narrow head. God's a great creator of all creatures. Do you realize this? The body shape. This insect is able to leap up great distances. Not fly, but leap. And actually is described as Velcro. Once they attach to humans or animals. A Velcro dart. Their body hair that helps them stay on. That Velcro moving through the hair of an animal or a human. Saliva that, that they have that excretiates from their body actually deadens the place that they want to bite so that you normally would not feel that little insect bite you. God's an amazing cre creator of all things. Their mouth parts and their special hairs that maximize their little ability to cut into the flesh to get to that, that blood. The ability... They have to drink enough blood to sustain life itself way into the future. Six months they can live, and they can drink enough to live that long. Amazing. Show the next picture. This is what they will do to you, these little mean little creatures. creatures. Now show the next one. There you go. How many of you have experienced something like that? Well... Corey Ten Boone in the hiding place. By the way, I want to tell you this right quick. You know, when Jim called me, I had this anxious, anxious, anxious moment. And I thought, oh my gosh, I preached there for 12 years. They've heard everything I have to say. What am I going to tell them? I don't have time to prepare a new sermon. I don't know what I'm going to do. I've actually had this message on the burner every November for 12 years. And I never preached it. So God, for such a time as this, wanted it. I couldn't figure it out, but today is the day. Corey Ten Boone in the hiding place tells... The story of how she was hiding Jews during World War II. It was found out that her family was hi hiding Jews and it cost them all imprisonment. And her and her sister, 
That's he ended up at the same location together. And I want to read out of the hiding place her famous story about these little creatures, critters that we have there. Listen to it here. We lay back struggling against the nausea that swept over us from the reeking straw. Suddenly I sat up striking my head on the cross slats above. Something had pinched my leg. Fleas! I cried. Betsy, the place is swarming with them. Here and here another one. I wailed. Betsy, how can we live in such a place? Show us. Show us how. It was said so matter-of-factly it took me a second to realize she was praying. More and more the distinction between prayer, prayer and the rest of life seemed to be vanishing for Betsy. Corey, she said excitedly, he's given us the answer before we ask as he always does. In the Bible this morning, where was it? Read that part again. I glanced down the long, dim aisle to make sure no guard was in sight, then drew the Bible from its pouch. It was in 1 Thessalonians, I said. We were on the third complete reading of the New Testament. In the feeble light, I turned the pages. Here it is. Comfort the frightened. Help the weak. Be patient with everyone. See that none of you repays evil for evil, but always seek to do good to one another and all, to all. Go on, said Betsy. That wasn't all. Oh, yes. Rejoice always. Pray constantly. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. That's it, Corey. That's his answer. Give thanks in all circumstances circumstances that's what we can do we can start right now to thank God for every single thing about this new barracks I stared at her then around at the dark foul aired room such as I said such as being assigned here together and I bit my lip oh yes Lord Jesus such as what you're holding in your hands I look down at the Bible. Oh, yes. Thank you, dear Lord, that there was no inspection when we entered here. Thank you for all these women here in this room who will meet you in these pages. Yes, said Betsy. Thank you for the very crowding here since we're packed so close that many more will hear. She looked at me expectantly. Corey? She prodded. Oh, all right. Thank you for the jammed, crammed, stuffed, packed suffocating crowds thank you Betsy went on serenely for the fleas and for for the fleas the fleas this was too much Betsy there's no way even God can make me grateful for the flea give thanks in all circumstances she quoted it doesn't say in pleasant circumstances. Fleas are a part of this place where God has put us. And so we stood between bunks and gave thanks for fleas. But this time, I was sure Betsy was wrong. Today, I'm not asking you who put the fleas in that bed, in that bunk, in that barracks. That's a theological question that I, I don't want to attack, tackle for us today. Because who put them there? Did chance put those fleas there? Did just the circumstances of life put them there? Did evil, did Satan put those fleas in that bunk? Or did God put those fleas in that bunk? A loving, caring God. My question is not who put the fleas in the bunk, in that bed, in that barracks. My question today, since they are there, and they are there, is it possible to have gratitude in the fleas? 1 Thessalonians 5.18 says, yes, there is that reality. You can turn there with me if you would like to. I've already quoted that passage for you from The Hiding Place in Corey Ten Boone. It simply says, give thanks in everything. Every, you've heard this passage so many times. Give thanks in everything. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Paul has arrived at Thessalonica 
probably around A.D. 50. Strong contingent of Jews there. How do we know that? There is a synagogue there. So evidently there was a strong contingent of Jews there. Paul debated with them over a course of time. And some were converted to Jesus Christ. Some had received Jesus Christ. However, many Jews were angry because of Paul's preaching and these that were being converted. So they brought about a riot in the city. And out of that, Paul and uh, the clan with him fled the city to, get, to save their life. They were about to be executed. After leaving, Christians that had been birthed there, the church that had been birthed there in Thessalonica, found itself certainly in an atmosphere of persecution by the Jews. Paul received the word that they had been steadfast and faithful, active in their faith. Even in the midst of the persecution, they continue to be steadfast and active. The result is, Paul is writing them to express first his joy. His joy in their commitment unto Jesus Christ, no matter what. But also to give them instruction and encouragement. Our verse is found in a cluster of imperatives. You can look at it there in your own Bible. A cluster of imperatives. Now, a cluster of commands, a cluster of have-tos for the Christian, a cluster of must for being in Jesus Christ, God's will for us in Jesus Christ. There it is. Now, it is everything for this passage of Scripture. Everything is found in a correct preposition to be used. Now, should the correct preposition be for or in? Thank God for everything. Or thank God in everything. Well, it doesn't seem like that big of a deal. It is huge in the translation and thus the application to us. To thank God for all the circumstances you find yourself in. Thank you, God, for this cancer. Thank you for the divorce of my children. Thank you for... or. Is in better. Thank you God. In the midst of the fleas. For certain realities. I think in certainly is the applicable. The right. The preposition that must be made. In the reality of whatever is in your life. Thanking God. That really brings us. The end brings us to the hardest word in the text. And that is everything. It does not say Thank Him for some things. It does not say most things, but all things. Everything, all things. Paul's instruct, instruction is thanking God in every circumstance of life. In the midst of every circumstance of life. Thanking God even there. You know what the challenge for me and for us this November is thanking God in the flea. Not necessarily for them, but in them, in the midst of them. I want to talk to you about three things. In reality, the thinking, God in the midst of the fleas. The truth that I'm getting at, we all have fleas in our bed of life. No, I don't. I don't have fleas. You, not in my house do I have fleas. I keep my house clean. I wash the sheets in my bed. I exterminate, have exterminator come, pesticide, I put it out. Fleas, these fleas are pesky critters that annoy, bite, irritate, produce frustration, suffering, pain, and irritation. All these realities we find in life at some point or another. A nuisance at best, a horrible, unpleasant, painful circumstance at worst. No life. No life is free from fleas at times in life. Do you know what the cure for a flea bite is? Let me, let me just share with you the cure that's suggested. Suggestions to treat flea bites include resist the urge to scratch. Yeah, right. A dog can't do that and a human does not much better at that as well. Wash the bites with antiseptic soap to reduce the risks of affection. 
Now, a flea bite can't kill you, but the infection that you might get might kill you. I think bluebonnet plague was actually carried by fleas and infested much of the world at one point in time. Apply an ice pack frequently to help relieve swelling. Use calamine lotion, anesthetic creams, or similar to treat itching. See your pharmacist. Thank God for pharmacists, Mike. For advice on appropriate antihistamine medications to reduce the swelling. Seek treatment for possible tapeworm infection since fleas can transmit this parasite through their bites. That's the simple cure for a flea bite. Well, what's the cure for flea bites in our life? Well, I want to suggest three things based upon thankfulness in. First is this. Don't ever let fleas hinder your big picture of God's blessings upon you. The big picture of God's blessing. I know we are lousy at math. We are lousy at counting. I've said that to you before. This new math stuff has messed us up. You know, count your blessings. Name them one by one. Count your many blessings. There was a cartoon of Charlie Brown was feeding Snoopy. He was carrying out his food to Snoopy. Charlie Brown carrying it out. Now this happened to be Snoopy's Thanksgiving dinner. It's going to be a Thanksgiving meal. So Snoopy's all excited about the meal he was going to get at Thanksgiving. And Snoopy looks down and guess what he is getting? His normal dog food. And Snoopy said, this isn't fair. The rest of the world today is eating turkey with all the trimmings. And all I get is dog food. Because I'm a dog, all I get is dog food. He stood there and stared at the food for a moment. And then he had this great revelation and he said, I guess it could be worse. I could be a turkey. <laughs> Look around in the fleas and thank God you're not a turkey today. Do an inventory. All, all you have in God. All that He's blessed you. We have so much. Let me give you some thoughts on that. Today, can you be thankful for taxes? Thankful for the taxes I pay because it means I'm employed. The clothes that fit a little too snug because it means I have enough to eat. A lawn to mow, windows to clean, gutters to fix because I have a roof over my head and a home. A spot I find at the far end of the parking lot because it means I am capable of walking. My huge heating bill because it means I'm warm. A person behind me who sings off key because it means I can hear. That might be me that sings off key. The alarm that awakened me this morning because it means I'm alive. Aren't you glad you're blessed to be alive today? We are so blessed in so many ways. We have so much. We are abundantly rich in this world. Undeserved, unearned. We are as a whole. It doesn't matter if the poorest here. We are still born with a silver spoon in our mouth. And we are blessed. Count your blessings. Also, look around at your family. Thank God, even in the fleas, for your family. Now, I know sometimes the fleas are the family. But even when they are, thank God in the fleas of the family. Oh, you get tired of doing all that laundry? Just see it as a picture of your family nearby. And I know that's probably mainly for the second service. But be thankful for the family that's nearby. One person said a Christian in someone is someone who does not have to consult his or her bank book to see how wealthy he or she, she really is. They can just look around and see their family. And then if you're a Christian, you've been blessed with Jesus Christ. You've been blessed with abundant life. You have been blessed with the promise of eternity. You have the gift of salvation. Oh, it doesn't matter how many fleas and where we're in the fleas in the midst of. We can always be thankful for Jesus and the gift He gave us by His death and His resurrection. Stop allowing the fleas to hinder your eyesight of the salvation you have and the gift you have in Jesus. You know, you know the song, Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. When's the last time you said, thank you, Lord, for the reality of salvation? Thank Him for the blessings of the abundance you have. You're blessed. Thank Him for family. Thank Him for salvation. Thank Him in the fleas. 
The first thing, do this November, add it up, add up all the blessings in the fleas and thank Him. Second thing, cure for fleas in life, the flea bite. Don't ever let fleas hinder your big picture of God's presence, ever presence. Someone said, it is not on the spiritual mountaintop that we need to know of God's sustaining presence in His love. But in the valley, in the valley, in there with the fleas is where we need to know. We most need to know of His presence walking through the valley of the fleas. In there with the fleas. Psalm 32, the Lord's unfailing love surrounds the man who trusts in Him. Always is the promise. There is that surrounding of His presence and His love. Isaiah 54, 10, God said, For the mountains shall depart and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from you. Romans 8, 37, And following, know in all these things we are more than victorious through Him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor death, nor any other created thing will have the power to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Thanksgiving faith flows because we know God's love is real. And then Thanksgiving faith flows because in the fleas we know that God's loving presence is near. It's real and it's near. Someone said Jesus never promised us gardens of roses and even daisies in this life. He did promise He would never leave us nor forsake us. So we know that and we can thank Him for that. In the fleas, let your eyesight perceive His presence. The present of His presence. Isaiah 43, 2 states, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Through the rivers, I will be with you. They shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. What's the promise there? He will not spare us from the waters of fleas, the fires of fleas, but He will go through them with us and with you. The second thing you need to do this November, add it up. And add up God's constant presence in the fleas. And then the third thing. The cure for flea bites. The cure for living in the fleas. Don't ever let fleas hinder your big picture of God's wisdom. Big picture of God's wisdom. No doubt our verse is a kissing cousin to Romans 8.28. All things work together. All things, it says, work together for good for those who love the Lord and who are called according to His purpose. In all circumstances, give thanks. Get this, one of the great dramas of the Bible is the truth that God is at work for good in our lives, in His children's lives, even when we can't see it with our own eyes, no matter what. You know what faith says? God, I see all the fleas in my bed, but I still believe, I still believe by your wisdom you can do something good even in the fleas in bed with me. Again, having fleas in the bed is not a good thing. Nobody would want that or ask for that. But God is able to take fleas and do good harmonize good in the fleas. Thank Him in the fleas that He is going to do something good out of the flea infestation in your life. Understand, God doesn't just respond to fleas in our lives to make the best out of bad situation. I'm just going to make the best out of this. No, God knows how to make good out of the fleas in your life. Psalm 147, 5 says, His understanding has no limits. Out of His great understanding and wisdom and knowledge, He can bring good. Don't you think God had a good plan in mind when Joseph, by his brothers, was sold into slavery, taken off to never uh, be able to go back home with his dad again in the same circumstances and taken to Egypt ultimately and was treated horribly there, but ultimately become second in command. Don't we believe that God had a good plan all the way? Well, Joseph certainly believed it when he said at the end, you meant it for evil against me, but God meant it for good. Charles Swindoll says, we don't have to thank the Lord for the storms of life. 
Did you hear him? We don't have to thank the Lord for the storms of life. But we can be grateful that through the rain and thunder, God is producing within us a spiritual harvest of good. The third thing you need to do this November is add it up. Add up all the good God is doing and going to do because you live in the fleas. Well, the rest of Corey Ten Boone's story and the fleas. Back at the barracks, we formed yet another line. Would there never be an end to columns and weights to receive our ladle of turnip soup in the center room? Then as quickly as we could for the pressing of people, Betsy and I made our way to the rear of the dormitory room where we held our worship service. Around our own platform area, there was not enough light to read the Bible. But back here, a small little bulb cast a wan yellow circle on the wall. And here, every larger group of women gathered. There were services like no others. This time in barracks 28. At first, Betsy and I called these meetings with great timidity. But as night after night went by and no guard ever came near us, we grew bolder. So many now wanted to join us that we held our second service after evening roll call. Before, we were under rigid surveillance, guards in their warm wool caps marching constantly up and down. It was the same in the center room of the barracks. Half a dozen guards and a camp police always present. Yet in the large dormitory room, there was almost no supervision at all. We did not understand it. One evening, I got back to the barracks late after a wood-gathering foray outside the walls, a light snow lay on the ground, and it was hard to find the sticks and twigs which, with which a small stove was kept going in each room. Betsy was waiting for me, as always, so that we could wait through the food line together. Her eyes were twinkling. You're looking extraordinarily pleased with yourself, I told her. You know, we've never understood why we had so much freedom in the big room, she said. Well, I found out that after noon, she said there had been confusion in her knitting group about sock sizes. And they had asked the supervisor to come and settle it. But she wouldn't. She wouldn't step through the door and neither would the guards. And you know why? Betsy could not keep the triumph from her voice. Because, you know it, of the fleas. The fleas, that's what she said. That place was crawling with fleas. My mind rushed back to our first hour in this place. I remembered Betsy's bowed head. Remember her thanks to God for creatures. I could see no use for. Thank you, God. In the fleas that I am blessed. In the fleas, I have your presence. In the fleas, you will bring good. Let's bow together. Thank you for the fleas, Lord. Because in the fleas, I see those things of you in your presence, your power, your love, your bringing about good. We give you glory today. I know there's some here today and there's a flea infestation around them. I, I, I've said it, but it's not thanking them for it's not thanking you for that infestation, but in it, in it. There are many things we can be thankful for. So thank you, Lord. And top on that list is our gift of salvation in Jesus, the gift of Jesus. Oh, Lord, if someone here today doesn't know Jesus, may they meet Jesus this day in this place. Encourage the one who is your child who's living in the infestation of fleas. If there's someone that needs to join this church, may they do that today. In Jesus' name, amen. I, I don't know what the Lord's telling you to do. 
But I'll, I'll meet you right here. If you're looking for a church home, I invite you to be a part of this church family. Great church family. I started to pull into the guest park, and then I thought, I'm not a guest here. I can't park there. This is our home church, and we're thankful for that because this is a great church. If you want to be a part of this church, and I'll meet you here. If you're looking for Jesus Christ and the hope of eternity, I can share with you how to have Jesus. Whatever it is, the altar is open. Let's stand together. Let's sing together. Step out and come.